Okay, it's uh, 7 o'clock. We will call the meeting in order. Uh, Bernadette is on vacation this week, so I'll go ahead and do the roll call. Mrs. Baum. Mr. G. Fry. Mr. P. Fry. Mr. Blair is here. Dr. Drawman. Here. Mrs. Long. Here. Mrs. Elias. Here. Mr. Reps. Not here. Okay, with all members present, we do have a quorum. Everybody be aware that we have emergency exit doors back here and back at the back of the room as well. If you could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under an agenda check, uh, it's a fairly open agenda tonight. Um, one of our board members uh, expressed an interest of having a, a meeting, a special meeting, to talk about some items, and uh, it's always uh, worthwhile to bring these, these issues out as, as we want to talk about them. We did have a couple items we could have considered for regular business, but uh, we're going to finish putting the paperwork together and get them in, in the next uh, meeting.
probably um, because of the, the special need for the format, but we, we will uh, have public comments, I guess. And we can do that before we get into uh, the, the board discussion. Yeah, so yeah, so we will uh, we'll make sure we get that. Um, and uh, so you're kind of covering this under agenda check at this point. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying. It's, right. Uh, yeah. I know that the policy is that uh, special meetings can modify uh, the agenda. Um, and I'm saying this in, with, with good intention. And this is one heck of a modification. Go from a state well, format to yeah, just I mean, discussion. Because, no, because we basically had no other items for action, that's why we were potentially going to um, cancel this meeting. Um, you raised the issue, so you know, I was out of town, obviously, so Jim said, well, let's use the same slot that everybody can make and have that discussion. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a big modification, but yeah, we'll, still, we'll still hold a public um, you know, comment session. Um, the other business wasn't anything urgent for tonight. We'll do it in the first, first meeting in August. Um, under an agenda check, though, did anybody have any other items? Because it's not just going to be I mean, like all of them, we have these items, but it's certainly open for other items. Anybody else have any other issues, items to discuss? Thank you. I would add one thing, and I'll maybe because of what we're going to be getting into. Can you hear me without the mic? No? Okay. That, uh, I know some of this is due to what happened at the, the, the last hearing. We'll go ahead and uh, hold a public comment uh, session for a portion of the meeting. Um, first speaker, if I can read this correctly, is Robert Serta. You want me on the phone or can everybody hear me from there? We can hear you from here. Uh, <laughs> I got two or four things. Um, 
What day is it? Today? Two weeks ago. Tuesday night, July 3rd. When it was the second. Anybody care to guess how many people showed up here Wednesday night, the third? Who's responsible? That was a mistake. It was on the website? It was even on the heading of the agenda? Yeah. No, it was correct. Why? Uh, Who do I act? Well, the minutes, hopefully they've been corrected, but we'll double check that. Okay. Uh, can I get an answer to that question sometime? I mean, is somebody responsible for editing and uh, posting on a website and uh, getting these things together with the proper data? Yes, our board clerk is such a cheap thing. Well, it's not unfortunate. We pay management here uh, uh, close to $3 million a year. That's only, it's an excuse. Next time. Well, we have a code of ethics we're working on now or something of that deal. The, the code of uh, conduct of them, sir? Yeah. Yes. Is that done yet? Yep. Is that available to the public? It is. It's posted on the website. Where are we going to get a copy? If you want a hard copy? Something I can read. I don't care. Every time the website is good enough for me, but I don't have a hard copy. You know, something that you're using the website. Uh, we can send you a link. Do you have, uh, do you have an email that we have available to us? Or we can, uh, I'd rather have a hard copy. Is that a problem? Okay. No. You stop by the district office and get your hard copy. Okay. All right, so at this point, um, we will go on to the, uh, the discussion topics. Uh, we can start uh, with your, your first item, and I think we'll just go down and have a full discussion on each, each item, and then um, actually come up with this, if, if people don't mind, um, can we try to do a data retreat first, just so we'll forget about it later. Um, and we'll come back to that. 
Um, so Jim had, uh, he's going to basically send us out some available dates. Um, he put in the letter that, he, that the available dates were at the end of August, but we said it was the end of July. Yeah. Um, but uh, we might have some conflicts with that anyway, so if you want to comment to what we might have available. Well, um, Charlie is willing to facilita uh, facilitate for us. Or emailing from Central New School, which is, I think is great. Um, so uh, his evenings are much more free than his uh, days. So uh, I can uh, uh, reconnect with him and I can throw out uh, several dates. We can go back and forth by email if you want and see if we can come up with one. Uh, have one set before the uh, next board meeting. Do, do people have uh, weeks using your application for the last week? Yeah, the last week of July. Anybody else have any questions? Shocking. Okay. So, sorry, sorry, what dates are you going to do? I'm trying to see if you're talking about the same weekend. Uh, I see. Like, do you need the 28th or whatever? Or do I go from the somewhere around the second, third, right through the last week? Next week. Okay. Next week.
So we, we, we did have that set, and we, you probably have a little calendar announcement, things that came in your email, but um, I don't have... They're all at 5.30. So let's see. The first, the first week of, the first Wednesday of the month is how the month is. The second Wednesday is how it is. The third Wednesday is how it is. The fourth Wednesday is budget. Budget for the dates to be determined. Yep.
In fact, between July 8, 2013 and July 10, 2013, just two days, that time frame, the Post Standard and uh, Ms. Hannigan, in particular, reported through six published articles regarding significant matters concerning the Jordan Miller Central School District, to include one an interview with Superintendent Mr. Froyo on July 8th regarding legal fees. The second one was published on the same day, July 8th, uh, in which Mrs. Hannigan reported about a website posting transcripts of the Hamilton hearing. On July 9th, 2013, a third article was uh, published written by Ms. Hannigan reporting that the website had been closed. On the same day, July 9th, a uh, fourth article was published reporting that the hearing officer, Milan, ruled that Mr. Hamilton's hearing was officially closed to the public and further ordered that the website be shut down. And then finally, on July 10th, 2013, it was reported that, um, again by Post Standard and uh, uh, reported by Ms. Uh, Hannigan, that the executive director of the New York State Committee on Open Government, Mr. Robert Freeman, someone we have come to know. Uh, I stated his belief that Mr. Milan should not have closed the hearings of the public and the hearing officers ordering the website to be closed was a First Amendment issue. Um, but that, you know, I want to reiterate these are significant matters. I was informed, I was informed the email uh, last Thursday, July 11th, just prior to my requesting uh, a special meeting that the regular meeting of the Board of Education scheduled for tonight, July 17th, had been canceled due to a lack of pressing issues. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. That's right. Uh, board members were encouraged in that same email to submit any pressing issues to the board president or superintendent. I stated my belief that there were pressing matters and referenced the decisions of the hearing office to ban the public attending the Hamilton 3020A hearing. As noted, the Post Standard published six articles related to significant district matters. The executive director, as I've said, uh, weighed in and questioned the authority of the hearing office. And by the way, I've uh, researched the law and I can see nowhere in uh, New York State Education Law or Public Offices Law where that authority is granted to the hearing office. I could be wrong, uh, but you know, I, I kind of take uh, note of someone like that, Mr. Freeman, making that uh, conclusion. Even the New York State School Boards Association included links uh, to Ms. Hannigan's article. So you're known throughout the state. Uh, I never stated that I was very upset. Uh, so it must be some other member uh, that expressed uh, being upset about uh, Mr. Lalonde's decision. Uh, it was reported by Ms. Hannigan last night that there was one board member who was upset. I never said that. Um, I did say that I was disappointed that I had to read these details in the newspaper uh, as opposed to receiving it from the district office. And so I requested and called for meeting initially to take place on or before July 16th. I did so because it was the first request to keep the 17th open for a possible workshop. Uh, I followed up with a request to hold it tonight to allow for maximum participation of board members as I was informed that some members could not attend on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, earlier this evening I read, the purposes I'm not going to read it again. Uh, I do believe that these matters warrant the board's attention for a school district that has had much difficulty with its reputation locally and beyond. I have to think that its governance body would do everything possible to open its business to the public. And I realize there are some things that we cannot talk about. I'm, I'm well versed in the the reasons to go into executive session and what I propose has been discussed in public and Mr. Milan has even commented in public uh, through uh, the post standard. Um, that wasn't saying the window in the session. No, I'll say that. If the discussion led to, to something, that's all. But, I, I but, that, but, but just being clear that what I've requested. Yeah. Okay. There are a lot of people who are shaking their heads. And I'm just, you know, I can't quantify this, but there are a lot of people to include my wife over coffee this morning, he said, why is the public being punished? I hear things uh, like that. There are a lot of people not satisfied with many directions and the decisions taken and made in recent years. How many? I can't quantify that, but enough to elect that 
and we become board members. People said they wanted to change. Regarding another important matter, I made an additional request on Thursday to have primary source documents provided to board members of the district office, and I'd like to list those. Transcripts to date of the 3028 disciplinary hearing for Melbourne Central School District versus Hamilton. My wife was actually reading those as they were shut down. A current list of the charges against Mr. Hamilton. I don't know where we stand. Transcripts to date of the 3028 disciplinary hearing for Melbourne Central School District versus Sanger. A current list of the charges against Mr. Sanger. All documents uh, submitted by both parties regarding the dismissal of charges for both disciplinary proceedings. And I'm saying that. Uh, I requested that they be provided in a secure, uh, convenient place. Pat, I don't think you want to be driving down uh, from Auburn uh, to uh, maybe have a half hour left in your day to uh, review documents at the law offices of either Von Schoenke King or, or uh, Frank W. Miller. Uh, all documents and materials provided by Michael G. Kessler Associates. Deep doing business as Kessler International resulting from his investigation as per agreement negotiated and signed October 18th by Mr. Frank Miller of the law firm of Frank W. Miller and Ms. Allen to our Dilbert Central School District uh, President of the Board of uh, Education at that time. Uh, the Jordan Elbert Central School District Board of Education on November 3rd approved this agreement between the Board of Education and Kessler International for the purpose of preparing a forensic audit of certain records of the Jordan Elbridge School District. Uh, we were informed it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,500. The contract actually says it's not to exceed $30,000 without the approval of the board. I have scoured uh, minutes and I have not seen anything that approved it, that uh, forensic order to go to what I believe is somewhere between $100,000 and $120,000. Um, Mr. Foyle expressed concern regarding the expense, and that's good in terms of what it would take. Um, he did check out copying costs and indicated that the estimated expense would be $600 and that the board would have to decide whether to extend these funds and make the access available at the district office. I hope the board will take action on this at this meeting. I want to I, I wanna add something here. I need to see these. I need to read these documents with my eyes. And I need to hear them with my ears. I don't want information provided to me filtered. That's fine. I totally agree with you. Okay, absolutely. Uh, I have prepared, let me, let, me, let me just share with you how important that is. Uh, I am going to not ask for a special meeting, we're actually going to talk about some of this at a, a, a workshop. But I believe, and this is not in my written state, but I feel compelled to tell you. I believe that we have some serious student achievement issues to address in this issue. Now, wait a minute. In the budget presentation that was shared many times in the community, there was one slide that said that we had a 96% graduation in the year 2011-12. When I checked the report card, that's not the case. For 2011-12, 96% of people graduated had bridges diplomas. And in fact, if you looked at the article prepared by the uh, Post Standard comparing graduation rates in central New York, the cohort graduation rate is 83.7%. And for me, it's more important to take a look at the group that started as opposed to a group that had gone through reading and sifting and failing and stepping back or dropping that. Take a look at that cohort group, it's 83.7. If you take a look at all 19 schools in Onondaga County, remove the Syracuse schools because I think that's legitimate. We are at the bottom. If you take a look at the Cuba Onondaga uh, BOCES component school districts, we are uh, six out of nine, but if you take out the Auburn City schools, we're seven out of eight. If you take it a look, no, this is important because I, I know it's important, but it's it's not not what we talked about. Well, I'm it telling you, that's true. why I don't want information filtered. I want to see it. I want to hear it. I understand the way everything in uh, Genesis. So I have the uh, presentation. I have prepared. For, okay. Of course, I know there was a okay. Genesis that was there. But suffice it to say, 
we didn't have a 96% graduation rate, but that's what the voters saw. And that's wrong. I prepared two resolutions for consideration by the Board of Education. I'll pass them out. They're very simple, but I hope that these will be taken up for action. At tonight's special meeting, July 17th, 2013. Thank you. Mr. Zanger, the cause of the public to be excluded from the hearing because he 
incorrectly thought that the hearing fell under the provisions of the Open Meetings Law. As explained by Robert Freeman, and you know, we do respect his opinion, the proceeding used to remove a tenured employee from a job is quasi-judicial, which means the Open Meeting Law doesn't apply. I feel Mr. Lalonde has actually done an excellent job conducting the hearing in a fair and expeditious manner. He's basically made sure things have moved along, which um, it's actually to the district's benefit to wrap up these hearings as soon as possible. Um, you know, it, it obviously reduces the cost. Any action to keep the hearing officer from completing his task as he deems appropriate wouldn't be in the district's best interests. Uh, so while it's unfortunate that the hearings were close to the public, it wasn't the district's initiative to do so. Um, also, statements provided by both lawyers, as this indicated and are quoted in the paper, uh, they basically supported the decision. Um, Barry Melfatano said the district is con concerned about the hearing being compromised. And Dennis O'Hara said, we want people to testify from their own recollections, not from what others have said after the meeting was closed, and, and you know, not what they've said or what they've read. Um, in regards to what was posted on the website, um, some of the information posted on the website wasn't actually available to the public except the fact that uh, um, they were obtained you know, from the lawyer, but they weren't public documents at that point in time. They were posted to the public. Um, and it says, you know, if you read the laws that, that you do find with the hearing officer, it's kind of questionable whether he can close the whole hearing, uh, but it does say he can block recordings, he can block, um, you know, video, and he can close portions of the hearings as he deems appropriate. Um, but in my opinion, for us to um, to basically defy what the hearing officer wants to do as part of how he conducts his business, it's, it's not the district's best interest. We want to wrap things up as fast as possible. As far as you know, the case goes, you know, we're we're, we're fairly far along with, with our piece of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to start from square one again. We are on our, I think, sixth. Is that right? We're in a certain uh, I don't know how many it's been. It's right after that, we're covered. It took two years, years to go. Two years to go. And uh, so, so we don't want to basically go through the process and expend the, the, the expenses of going through that again. Um, and so I feel if, if that's what he feels he needs to do to have a fair hearing, I would support that. Let me first respond to one of the things you said. Mm -hmm. uh, you indicated, I think I heard you correctly saying that uh, the hearing was progressing in a very fair manner. Uh, something to that effect. So basically, he, he, he's not providing any favor on either side. Um, um, maybe you read, you said uh, that. In a fair and expeditious manner, that's what I said. How do you know that? Were you in the hearing? I wasn't at the, the last round, but we've, we've had briefing from the first round. And, that briefing. So through someone else, I would hope that it's fair, but you don't have first hand. Correct? Well, uh, you've heard from the attorney, you've heard from Mr. Troy, I would assume. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Okay. But now not not first hand. Now I want to respond uh, to Lisa on uh, to Ms. Long's comments. Uh, correct. The district didn't make the rule, but the district and its attorneys made the complaint. Um, About the items being posted against the hearing officer. Correct. Well, on yes. the subject of the uh, on the subject of the hearing officer's directive, I told you my wife was sitting on Monday evening because we didn't know anything about the website until uh, Ms. Hannigan published the report. So it was sometime around nine or so, she's reading it, and she saw the directions, the rules given to the public. It said nothing about transfers. It said that there could not be video recordings <coughs> or audio recordings. It didn't say anything about transfers. I personally believe that that's what really tore this hearing officer off. 
But if that happened sometime at 9 p.m. on Monday, how did the district or how did the hearing office know about that by 9 o'clock in the morning? Perhaps not a big window. I can't imagine. Well, you know, I'm just raising that as a, you know, he didn't make the ruling. He did. But the district, sometimes the district, someone's got to define district for me. Are you the district? Is the attorney on district? I don't think so. I think we are first and foremost charged for what goes on in this district. Well, in a policy and the direction. That's yeah. correct. Yep. That is and this was this this is a major, this has major impact. So sometime down the road, maybe at a future retreat in December, someone can define for me a district because I think it gets tossed around. I think you're right. Okay. Because I certainly would have complained about that. My God, we have been waiting when I was on the other side, I was waiting. For some information. By the way, there was a tall gentleman dressed in a I won't make a won't make a derogatory comment. And he was he was very imposing, sitting as a guest of honor um, at the meeting or at the hearing. Know who it was? I said, I I've seen that face. Someone said maybe it's uh, someone from. Uh, Michael G. Kessler. Michael G. Kessler. He was there to testify. That's right. And the, the opportunity for this taxpaying group of citizens and citizens that had wanted to know what this forensic audit that we didn't authorize a hundred and some odd thousand dollars to pay for. We, we still But I want to know. You can know. You should know. I am not going, Ms. Long, I put in right Don't put your finger, please. Uh, Don't put your When I put my finger, I'm... You're being polite. I am being polite. Okay. And if you would take Google pointing finger and see the different ways of the different interpretations, I'm not trying to be I'm trying to make a point. I would prefer you don't. Well, I prefer to be able to have the freedom to use my hands. I promise. I will not go. I have put in writing, I will refuse. Mr. Froyo graciously said, you're free to go to the law firm. I will not go to the law firm of Frank W. Miller. It is costly. I have one car. I think it would be inconvenient and costly for other members. Those are, those are district documents, and they ought to be available conveniently for the duly designated people to review. We should discuss that tonight. I will not go in addition to Miller's office because it's my personal opinion to get that out to the boys who like to rattle my cage and, and threaten me. Well, you no, it. no, I, I'm making some valid points, Mr. President. Lisa said, I can go. I will not go. I will not go to the law firm of Bunch So later in time, we can have a motion to get them printed at the taxpayer's expense. And everyone's in here. And now it's a fairly little money, so we will probably you know, go through the process. Um, okay. But in a lawsuit that I've ever been involved with, those are my documents. <laughs> they are provided to me instantly. Every lawsuit that I've been ever involved with, the documents that are generated from the courts, the documents that are back and forth between for a motion, are considered my documents and are immediately sent to electronically. At your, right. at your expense. Absolutely not. You're probably it, it, charged. So it's not part of your lawyer's fee that they're. It's, yeah, it's part so of the lawyer's expense. Yeah, but you know, it, it's been generated a hundred times. I'm sure that it, it oh, exists. The volume is huge, obviously, but the expense is not that big. And I don't think the motion will probably go through. With the idea that we were just discussing.
Now it's a quasi-legal, so a disciplinary procedure. We have no say over how he runs that meeting. We can either agree or disagree with the decision he made, and that's our opinion, just like certain course cases that, you know, so I'm sure you can pull all of us here, we're not all going to agree, and we can go down the floor list of cases that they have nothing to do with the district. You know, we're in personal opinions. You know, what he did is what he did. He must have had reasons, obviously, he didn't share that with us. Um, but we had no jurisdiction over his decision. And unfortunate, it is what it is. We need just to move on and let's, let's get things through. something down. Um, but I'm going to get into that. I'm just 
say respectfully, I'd like this board to consider and respectfully ask him to reconsider. We had been through hell. And there were a lot of people that came. Right? I had a conversation with Mr. Harlow. I don't know if you're to the community's benefit. Mr. Harlow is the Jordan Elbridge um, representative. It's the Cuban Island Valley Bosis. Um, and uh, he's expressed his thoughts about this. He was on his way down here and he was arriving and people were getting kicked out. Um, he's, he's, he's acting as a, a public citizen tonight. But, but, but there are people who have been wanting to know, we're moving into the fourth year of these suspensions. Crimes, regardless of where you stand on the Zimmerman thing, the prosecution and the defense presented in 24 days, I believe. We're exceeding that at 30 days in one hearing and, and uh, you know, how many were up to with, uh, you know, for crying out loud and, you know, say um, what you want. I made the point last time, I think, But I think we need to extend on the big definition. Fair enough. Can I have no, one more? This, this is a board decision. This is board decision. No, I, I, not but, to influence the board's decision, just to clarify my statement. I don't yeah, understand. What do you, do you, you said it? kind of misinterpreted what I said. Um, but at this point, we've been in the board discussion. If you want to bring it back to the next meeting, we're going to come coming for it. It's not, it's not a public discussion at this point, it's a board discussion. Thank you. Um, if you want to email me to clarify, I'm going to bring it back up the next meeting. Well, I would like to say before the vote, before the vote is that you misrepresent what my request was. Um, I'm, I'm just not going to go back into the other part. It's kind of breaking the agenda. Thank you, though. Um, we, don't, we don't have a motion at this point. Just a couple of things, uh, and I'll be very brief. Um, <clears throat> I checked into the cost earlier. I thought I sent you an uh, email to that fact, line, but it's, it'll be less than $600 uh, for the copying fees. I think I'm probably around the $400 each other page. Um, so it'll be slightly less than that. Um, <clears throat> uh, business. Um, also, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, the hearing officer made a public statement relative to no videotape, audio tape, et cetera, but um, he was very clear to the attorneys themselves that, um, you know, the transcripts could not be made public until after the hearing was over uh, because he didn't want uh, uh, witnesses uh, reading stuff prior to their testimony. Um, and so the attorneys on uh, representing the district and uh, representing uh, Mr. Hamilton were well aware of that. I'm not, I'm not privy to that information. If that was the case, I'm not aware of it. That might be the reason that Mr. O'Hara and Mr. Zaner agreed with the hearing officer in his decision. Possibly. I'm glad you brought that up because I want to respond to that. That sounds like you know, Fred Butler and uh, Donald I frankly, I don't care what Mr. O'Hara and Mr. Zaner feel about this. I have some speculation as to why they said that. I mean, when you have a hearing officer say that it may be actionable what was printed, <laughs> that would, it's still more than fear of God. And, uh, what I care about is what this board does. And I'm simply asking that it requests respectfully reconsideration. So basically, you're trying to number two here, right? Providing context for board to take action or not. So yes, at this point, if you want to uh, make a motion, then you're well, right there. Right. Passing around, but I think uh, and I think we have uh, other discussions. Although if they relate to the items, we can have discussions part of the motion. I'm fine with that as well. Yes, I can verbally do it. Uh, if I prefer to pass it around. Sure. Yeah, we do. Okay.